So to begin T2, what we're going to start doing is doing what's actually called statistical mechanics. We're actually using uh, kind of model systems and, thing, and, and models that we can build up to actually see if we can calculate uh, the actual um, energy in a solid and then determine how it actually moves from one side to the other. Now we're not going to be able to do this with an actual solid, so what we're going to do is we're going to do, create something um, called an Einstein solid. Um, an Einstein solid is really is really simple. It's uh, it's a single uh, ball, so a single mass basically, uh, that's separated by. Um, uh, let me do this correctly. Let's see if I can do some three dimensional drawing. All right, and then this should go like this. So it's separated. But it's connected by three springs to another set of balls. All right, and those are going in the x, y, and z directions. Um, and then those, you know, also obviously have their own set of, uh, you know, of, um, of springs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the great thing about this is that uh, with this type of model, it turns out that every single atom, um, <clears throat> so every single atom is just um, three harmonic oscillators. All right, and so for every atom, you basically just have a collection of three harmonic oscillators, um, one along the x direction, one along the z direction, and one along the y direction is kind of the idea. Um, the cool thing is we've already actually done the harmonic oscillator, if you remember, and we've written down the energy. Uh, if you remember the energy of a single oscillator um, uh, is equal to uh, h bar omega n plus one half. It turns out that if you have these three uh, harmonic oscillators that are going in different directions, so x, y, and z, that are perpendicular to each other, it turns out that uh, they actually act independently, and they will just act as, uh, it's the same as having three harmonic oscillators. So, so uh, e even though they're, they're technically all connected, they act completely independently of each other. And so the energy of, of, one, uh, of one atom um, it's just going to be uh, the energy of one harmonic oscillator plus the energy of the second harmonic oscillator plus the energy of the third harmonic oscillator, um, you know, in X, Y, and Z. Um, and so it ends up being really nice that you can actually very quickly get the, the total energy of a harmonic oscillator. Um, now it turns out that we're going to, there's this term here that doesn't have the N in it, this, this one half H bar omega. It turns out because we can kind of shift our energies always by any amount, um, we, we're not going to worry too much about that term. And you're going to basically get a result at the end that the total internal energy of an, of an atom is just going to be equal to the sum of, uh, of N equals 1, 2, um, to, to 3, big N, where N is the number of atoms that you have, and the three is because there's three harmonic oscillators for each, uh, for each system. Um, and so basically each uh, uh, atom is going to be treated as these three different harmonic oscillators that can basically uh, collect any amount of energy uh, up to, um, uh, uh, that, that can be distributed among its three oscillators. Um, so, for instance, let's just take let's just take an example because I think this is this is a, a, a kind of a, a tough thing to think about in in um, reality. Let's say we had um, let's say we had uh, uh, something that uh, a harmonic oscillator that had uh, five units of energy. Um, we're going to do it in terms of e because it turns out that um, uh, this is the this is um, the total energy is the sum of uh, e or epsilon n. Um, uh, and this epsilon is just basically the, the, um, this constant that comes out of uh, the harmonic oscillator. It's h bar divided by square root of k over m. Again, you don't need to worry too much about that. Basically, all you need to know is that each, um, uh, for each uh, element that we have, any solid that we have, any Einstein solid that we have, it'll just be treated as a bunch of separate oscillators that can uh, absorb that, um, that energy. And so let's take... Um, a, an atom that has that that um uh, that has a uh, one, uh so we we have one atom, all right. Um and let's say that this atom has five units of energy. What it means is that um okay it's one atom but it's actually three harmonic oscillators, all right. And again we can have the different energy levels, 
And if you remember, they're evenly spaced in the case of harmonic oscillators. So these lines should all be the same spacing away if I'm actually drawing them right. And so for a, a harmonic oscillator uh, that has uh, five units of energy, um, one of the ways you could do it is by having um, is by having the the one uh, just have one, two, three, four, five. The one harmonic oscillator could just have five uh, units of energy, and then these guys would have zero. Um, so you wouldn't have energy, any energy. So because if you remember, n can go equal to zero for um, for uh, for the harmonic oscillator. Um, uh, or uh, actually, let's let's do this. Let's do this in a better way. Um, let's do uh, uh, this is n equals zero, one, two, three. N equals zero, one, two, three. And it goes zero, one, two, three. Um, so, uh, so let's let's just distribute it a little bit differently. We could do three, two, and zero, for instance. Um, uh, and again, that that would be the way to distribute the energy. And the point is that you can have many different ways of doing this. Um, and those are all different. You can have many different states. Let's do a different one in a different color. You could also have, let's say, one of them have one, one of them have one, and the other one have three. Um, there are many different ways to basically distribute that energy among the Einstein solid uh, that has five units of energy. And that's basically the system that we're going to be dealing with. So we're going to have these harmonic oscillators and every time we have every atom we have, we'll have these three oscillators in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to start trying to count uh, the, um, the different ways that we can actually distribute that energy. Uh, now to actually make this uh, useful, we need to talk for a second about microstates and macrostates. Um, so a macro, uh, uh, um, a mic, uh, sorry, a macro state. A macro state is the thing that we can measure. So, um, so it's something you can measure or care about. Um, so in this case, the the macro state is uh, is the the U, the the total energy that this um, that this this solid has. So the solid has. Um, you know, U equals five, you know, units of energy, five epsilon of energy. Um, uh, and so that's that's a, a macroscopic thing that you can measure. You could also imagine you can measure its temperature. Um, you can measure its thing's masses. Um, you can measure the number of particles that the thing has. These are all measurable things. The microstate is the little things that make up that macro state. So the micro state in this case, for instance, is how um, how the energy is distributed uh, in um, a, uh, a a an a uh, an Einstein solid, for instance. So, for instance, um, if we look up here in the green, um, so in the green. Oh, I was trying to do that in green. My pen isn't green anymore. If you look up here in the green. The green is a state that has one unit of energy in the first uh, in the first uh, harmonic oscillator, one unit of energy in the second harmonic oscillator, and three units of energy in the third harmonic oscillator. The red state um, has three in the first one, uh, two in the second one, and no energy in the third one. Those are two different microstates because the energy is distributed in different ways in each one of those but they're the same macro state they both are a system that has the same number of atoms it has the same mass it'll have the same temperature and it has the same amount of energy which is it has five five epsilon worth of energy in that state and it turns out that this um uh this fact that they're uh, that they're microstates uh, sorry that, that each macro state has multiple different microstates is going to be the key to actually understanding why uh, energy moves from things that are hot uh, to things that are cold and it's crazy to to think about the fact that like that would be the case uh, but it is um, and I will show you more of how to do that in the next video where I actually talk about how we actually count microstates.